I am in the process of making my own custom exoskeleton. I'm at the stage now where I've got the bottom half done and I've got the top half done. Um, mostly. I can still make some adjustments to it, but now I need to start um, thinking of a hinge and closing mechanism and seeing how all the components fit together. But before I do all that, I'm going to show you how I got to this stage. Okay, so I started with making the lower section of this, and unfortunately it's too long. It's the length of my forearm, but it's, not, it's too long to fit on the build plate. So I had to um, cut this up into different pieces and then join slots over there so that it can go into place. And then what I did was I made some hinges. These were way too small though, so I'm going to have to um, make them a bit bigger. And I started with a sketch on this face and I extruded it out 2.5 mil and then moved it over to this side um, after, yeah, after extruding it. So I moved it over to that side and then I created a sketch on this point over here and extruded out 10 mil, did the same thing over here. That's when I decided to make the slit that slots right into there. Then for the second component, which was the top half, I decided to do essentially the same thing, but add a guard here and here. These are so that I can rest some electronic components on there, which will hopefully allow me to be able to open it and close it automatically. Then um, that is like the closed assembly of it. Um, I can move these around. Um, those hinge slots are going to need to be redesigned, but uh, my forearm will rest in that point there and then that will close on top in the actual one it's not going to have this it's um going to create a part there that's going to join to my bicep but um i only need this kind in the forearm for now so it needs something to rest on but i will get rid of that um and then those were the hinges that i made initially um way 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 too small so i'm going to completely redo those um and then I'm going to start it with this. And then I've got these on the build plate over here. Um, it is quite an awkward thing to print. It is, um, that's the total height of it there. And then it's gonna have the supports over here. This is the other point that's also really awkward to print. I have no idea what the best orientation for that is. And it's gonna be quite quick actually, um, way quicker than I thought. It's only gonna be two hours and it's gonna be 40 grams of filament. That's 50% infill density. So, um, I will set this up on the print plate and then I will just get on with some of the stuff. I had literally just started the print and then I realized that I forgot to add the taper on this. So it wouldn't fit if it wasn't tapered. I calculated the taper angle already right there. So it needs to be 9.46 on each side. And then, yeah. Okay, so I realized it's gonna be basically impossible to make this on the solid page. So I'm going to make this on the sheet metal page. So I'm going to copy this sketch over, mirror it, add a taper, and then I'm going to add a bend so that it fits the shape of the radius of my wrist and my forearm, the widest part of my forearm. But that's going to take a while, so I'm just going to get started on it now. So in that time that I realized all of the errors that I made, like it wasn't tapered or anything like that, I decided to fully redesign it. So um, I've got the, that's now ellipse, it's not circular. Um, I added that bar so I can make hinges on the side. That is the part for my wrist. Then it reaches the middle of my forearm and then it reaches the end of the forearm. But this is way too big to go on the print bed, so I set it into different bodies. Um, that one has a hole over there, um, here and on the other end. And then this one has the pins, so they're corresponding components. That way, um, I can just slot them into place when they finish printing and I can join them together. <clears throat> and after that, um, I had seven different sketches so that um, I could actually taper them at different points. So this sketch, this sketch, and then all of those so that they would match the topology of it and um, I could basically stop them whenever I wanted to. And now I can print them in separate parts. I'll print this one first, make sure it goes around my wrist, and then I'll print off the second one. So I've got the slicer open here, and I've got the two components, so I'll just drag them on. And then um, I will just get ready to print it. I have it at 90% infill density using a gyroid infill pattern. Then I've got the supports on, but no brim. And I printed it so that the pins and the holes are at the top, so that they have the best finish and it allows for the tolerance. Now I'm going to go back into Fusion and I'm going to start modeling the hinges and the upper half. This is just to make sure that everything fits.
Okay, so I'm just going to print all of these um, in the vertical orientation. That's going to be for the upper half, that's going to be for the lower half, and then the hinges. Um, my print came out, this one, it was awful quality. Um, it would be better to print it in that orientation, but I just need to see if it fits fully. So I'm still going to print it vertically for now. Well, for my final one, I'll print it in that orientation. Um, it's going to take, let me see actually. It will take... Do, 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 five and a half hours and 100 grams of filament so i'll just leave that to print these ended up printing awfully i completely misjudged how thin it would be in real life because on fusion it looks scaled up so these were the pins that i had um obviously way too thin to print especially vertically so i've redesigned it and i'm going to put it on the print bed now it's going to be way thicker Okay, so I've redesigned it and you can see it's quite a bit thicker and a bit sturdier, so it's going to be able to print way easier. Um, I increased the diameter of those pins as well. This is only for the upper half. I need to put the bars going through it for the lower half and then I should be fine for this for now. This has now printed. Um, it's got the taper there for the forearm. It's got the model over here. That's where the hinges are going to go. So I'm going to print them off now. I just designed some specifically for this. Okay, so I have everything designed now. These hinges are really stiff though. Um, so I increased the tolerance a tiny bit and I'm going to reprint them as I print the rest of it. I've got all of those um, exported and ready to print. Um, it'll probably take like five hours or so though. So it'll be ready tomorrow. Okay, so that's everything on the print plate, except for one of the components, because there's not enough space. It's going to take seven hours. So I'm just going to print this first, and then tomorrow I'll put the other one on the print plate. But I'm tired, so I'm just going to leave it here for now, and then I'll wait for the second one to be done. It was printing so well the whole time. Then I go to bed, and this happened. Bro, this is so annoying. And then, look, literally, the print, pr the print quality, this whole time was perfect, then suddenly... <sighs> so after a bunch of failed attempts, um, I got the top two ones working. So I'm working on these ones. I've got the, um, I decided to put some rafts on it because it failed dismally the other time. Um, that's got five layers on it, that's the tree supports, um, and I put a broom on it as well. I need the ex or the bed adhesion I can get. So I'm going to print them separately as well, this part and then the other half that will glue into there. So it's going to take three hours and then I can just get on to printing the other one. I had to redesign it again because these kept on failing. So I stopped it midway and went back to the drawing board came off with that it's essentially the same thing it's got a slight lip so that um it can be supported it can support all the materials um it can open up and everything and then i've got it on the um print plate right here and it takes way less to actually print like half the time so i'm just going to do that on the larger side and then i will see what happens but yeah after like I think it's six, seven different prototypes um, I landed on this one, which is slightly different. It has an extra brace on the inside so the Arduino doesn't fall through. Um, and then the other side is completely hollow, like that one there. And then um, it's just going to print them, take three and a half hours, and then I will start assembling it. These are the final two pieces, um, printed fine. I put a two layer raft on it. Um, I'm just going to glue them together, wait until they fit together, and then um, I will just start working on my next prototype, but next time. Now I've got all of the parts printed out, that has the extra brace at the bottom and the support, um, and then I've got this part over here, which is the lower half. I just reprinted this one because um, that is too thick and it actually doesn't need to be like that. So I reprinted that, but um, this is exactly the same. So I'm just going to design the hinges and I'm going to print them off and then I will get back to you in the next one.
And unfortunately for the engine block, I can't work on it until I get back to school because I'm at the stage where I can only start manufacturing it. So, um, I literally have nothing to do on this engine block until I get my quote back and I can start machining it out of metal. But, um, that's the current stage that I'm at. Um, if you have any more, um, suggestions, then I'll just implement those. Also, um, I'm thinking of making really detailed components the crankshaft is fine but then for like the um piston head and the um piston rod i would make really detailed versions to have alongside this to complement it but that's going to be um a september type project so you're gonna have to wait for that